What's up, everybody? It's Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast, back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak. We got Brett on the show. Welcome back, Brett. Hey, man. How's it going? Glad to be back. Doing good. Good to have you on again. And then we got Anthony on the show. What up, Anthony? Thanks for coming on. It's your first time on the podcast. Yeah, what's up? I've been, I'm, it's been a while, man. I've been wanting to get on here. Talk <laughs> football, you know it. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. You, me and you talk football all the time, but I just haven't had you on the podcast yet. So it's good to have you on. I know. Long, long time dude, coming. I, dude, I like – dude, I love football, but, like, honestly, like, I, I know a couple other guys may know more than me. Yeah. I know a lot, but <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with it. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I'm confident. We got three knowledgeable football guys. We know the game. We're going we're gonna to break it down for you, so – Ready. Yeah. Let's get into this. All right, so we're going to break down this is the 2020 Chicago Bears season preview. Me and Anthony, big Bears fans, Brett, the rival Lions fan. Oh, he's a Lions fan. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is uh, – yeah, is, uh, I don't know what awesome. he's wearing, but you know what they say. No, I'm just kidding. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get in here. So last year, 2019, the Bears go eight and eight, finished third in the NFC North. We started three and one, but then a Mitch Trubisky elbow injury, and we hit the hit a slide. Four games lost in a row. Some big losses late in the year to the Rams and to the Packers uh, kept us out of the playoffs. Issues across the board on offense. The quarterback play regressed. In my opinion, the play calling by head coach Matt Nagy regressed. Uh, offensive line struggled. Wide receivers among the leaders in drops. The defense was still top 10, but not the best in the NFL like they were in 2018. Um, issues or injuries, a big reason why, with Vic Fangio being replaced by Chuck, Chuck Pagano. And, uh, but I think the defense is talented enough to rebound. Uh, Anthony, what do you think? Uh, disappointing year last year, but I think there's there's room for improvement for sure. Oh yeah, big time. I mean, if you look at you know they went they went big with the Colt Komet pick yeah. round pick, round two, mm -hmm. and they went kind of like how they usually do. They went ahead and drafted a couple you know defensive players, maybe some no namers. That guy from Tulsa, fifth yeah. round. You know they just kind of they went and grabbed him, and then. Uh, couple tackles at the end of the draft. But I think I think they will rebound. I think, um, you know, they had Chase Daniel. I think they got rid of him. And now you got Mitch Trubisky. I, I want to say it's midges to lose. You got Foles in there now. Yeah. You, you know? can't ask for a better backup than Foles if that's the case, if yeah. you're Mitch. I mean, yeah. What, go ahead. I personally think Foles is going to take that over, personally. Mm -hmm. But uh, – you know, I think like like to start, I think Midge, it's Midge is to lose. I think the defense will be fine. I'm not, I'm not like a huge fan of Chuck Pagano being a Bears fan and everything, but yeah, uh, you know, just seeing what he did at Indy and stuff like that. But uh, you know, you look at, you know, losing Vic Fangio and that sort of thing. I think that was a big loss for the Bears defensively I overall. Agree. Yeah. Um, but I think they're in good hands with Pagano. I feel confident he's gonna you know, maybe develop some of those younger players. And he's been doing it a long time, so. I agree, because I think that part of it was the losing Vic Fangio is why we stepped back, but also injuries. We lost Akeem Hicks right in the heart of the season. That was a big loss. Um, what linebacker did we lose for a little bit? Was it Trevathan we lost for a while? Trevathan, he's been a little injury prone, yep. Yeah, um, you know, so. Some stuff like that, I think, really derailed it. Plus, the offense did the defense no favors. I mean, when you're constantly going three and out and the defense has to stay on the field, you get tired. Um, so I do think Chuck Pagano, he isn't Vic Fangio, but I think we can rebound to a top five defense uh, if health and we play to their strengths more. Um sure. Brett, what is your take on the Bears' defense? Do you think they're more of a top-10 defense than a number-one defense? Or what do you expect from 2020 on the Bears' defense? Um, well, coming from a couple of years ago, they, you know, they definitely went in the direction that you would not you know, be the most 
happy with uh, as any team, with any fan uh, base or whatnot. So, Those trust uh, when you has killed me, man. <laughs> it, it, it's not like they uh, – they uh, could have went any more, you know, could have went above and beyond like where they did. You know, they were that that defense a couple of years ago was ridiculous. Yeah, uh, it was hard to it's hard to rep. You know, to have that be have that du- duplicate season the following year. You know, defensively and be able to uh, continue those expectations. But you know, you don't want to show any any uh, level of of where you may be. Uh, diminishing uh, what people are saying about you as a defense. So, yeah, I don't think number one, you know, a top defense this year, but they may have a chance to get back into, you know, what we saw them as um, a couple of years ago. So, uh, we'll have to see how they go about things now with this with this big change. Yeah, I do like some of the pieces we added. I mean, Leonard Floyd was decent, but he didn't always – he seemed to have his best games against Green Bay and disappear in other games. I love the addition of Robert Quinn from the Cowboys, another edge defender. You put Quinn with Khalil Mack on the other side, that's a dangerous one, too, to get to the quarterback. Um, in the second round, we draft corner Jalen Johnson, and I don't feel like enough people are talking about him. He's big, six-foot – long wingspan, rangy corner that, in my opinion, could be replace Kyle Fuller, like not right away, but down the road as a number one corner. I'm very high on Jalen Johnson, and uh, he's a ball hawk out there. Um, somebody. Yeah. Fuller getting old, man. Yeah, I like Fuller, but, I mean, Jalen Johnson, in my opinion, is a, is a big upgrade over Prince of Mukamara, just on athleticism and potential. Um now, what's your take, Anthony? You've watched Cole Komet closely for a while now. What is he going to bring to this offense? I mean, our last couple tight ends last year, we didn't have a tight end, really. No one stepped up. Adam Shaheen turned out to be pretty much a bust. Okay. You know, uh, our tight ends, we haven't drafted well on tight end. What's, what makes Cole Komet different, and how is he gonna, how can he help us out? Well, when we went and picked up Cole Komet, um, one, one thing stood out about him, mm-hmm. his physicality. He's going to be, he's going to be that physical, he can physical tight end, go down the field, can stretch it if he need to, can do all the little things. He can block. Jimmy Graham is there, right? Jimmy Graham yeah. is there. At the it's a good one, two combo. Yeah. There were so many things. That, yeah. There were so many changes over the offseason. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot yeah, of changes. So Jimmy Graham's like on his 15th team, you know, now, and, uh, <laughs> He's very similar to Cole Komet in a lot of ways. Yeah. I think that'll help him out big time. But I think Cole Komet's going to be – could possibly be a big-time starter, almost like a Greg Olson mm-hmm. for a long time. And he's really a lot like Andrews, kind of, or Hayden Hurst. He, he's good for the Ravens. He's a solid tight end. You, you, see, the, you see the NFL kind of going into this tight end, spread out offense that, yeah. you know, you, you have a – big tight end sets, but really they're like wide receivers as well. I mean, Mm -hmm. you're seeing that a lot. Even Notre Dame, if you look at their recruiting, you can see they're drafting tight end after tight end after tight end to fill in. Because if you can have a really physical tight end that can go out and run a 4-5 or a 4-6 even or whatever, catch the ball, have good hands, you can run the ball as well. That's like having an extra lineman. I mean, really it's – Yeah, if he can do both. That's a thing. Yeah, you know. Like, Tight ends are becoming more and more of that safety blanket for quarterbacks and so important in today's offense. You, you go back to 2018 when Mitch had his best career in the league and the Bears had their, their you know, best year, you know, two years ago. Uh, Trey Burton was a huge part of that. And yeah. Trey Burton really regressed and was injured last year. And I think tight end is a big part of Matt Nagy's offense and it's going to be a big part of Trubisky. It's like the easier throw, the check down, the, the open guy a lot of times. And so that's – he's going to be key. If Cole Komet and Jimmy Graham can have a good year, that's going to do a lot for the Bears having a good year. Yeah, um, the, yeah. the tight end position is a big, big factor for offenses, I think. Yeah, and in the NFC North in general. And 
you know, you guys got TJ Hawkinson coming up. The Vikings got Irv Smith Jr. and Kyle yeah. Rudolph. We need to stay in pace with those and uh, keep up with that. Now, I hated the Jimmy Graham move at first. I wanted Eric Ebron. But after thinking about it, I think Graham fits. This offense is a little bit better of a fit. He fits what Nagy's trying to do. But the only image that is just stuck in my head about Jimmy Graham last year is the Monday night game or Thursday night game against the Eagles where he's got a game-winning touchdown catch and tries to one-hand it and drops it. He better not be trying that shit in Chicago. Yeah, I don't know, man. He's staying in the same same division, you know. I was kind of like, eh. Yeah. You know, the but Packers already, taking, who are our tribe already know how he plays, you know. It's kind of like. Why, why are we taking Green Bay's trash? Let's go get our own trash. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get our own, right. You know what, Cole Clement, though, if yeah. I remember one game that stood out for him, though, if you go back to his college days, last mm-hmm. year when we played uh, Georgia at Georgia, Mm-hmm. I mean, or was it, or was it maybe the year before? But I remember he was the one guy on the team at Notre Dame that actually was ready. Looked like he was ready for the NFL. I mean, yeah, last year. I mean, he was just he was unbelievable. I thought he was great. So, now you were talking about uh, let's get Brett. Like Nick Foles comes in uh, on free agency. Uh, he didn't have a very good year with Jacksonville last year. Got injured to start the year. What's your thought on the Bears quarterback competition? And what are you rooting for? Do you want to, like, Mitch under center because you think there's more opportunity to, to shut down Mitch? Or, and are you worried more about Foles' upside? Or what do you think of the Bears quarterback competition? I don't know if uh, so much of it being a competition as it is just uh, – I mean, maybe uh, – that's the outlook of it, but maybe it's just the fact that it's the back, you know, the situation of, all right, true risky, this is your, you know, it's yours to lose. So, you have last um, chance to prove it too. Right. So, if it, it, the competition is, if he can step up to what, uh, you know, his, I guess, potential is and what people want him to be throughout Chicago and the organization. Yeah. Um, Foles, I mean, it, I mean, I guess, you know, Foles could come out. Uh, in training camp and just to be unbelievable. But I don't think uh, Foles can, you know, take that. But definitely, yeah, I agree with the fact that it's Trubisky to lose because they, you know, they the GM, the, the office has that mindset that they did this, made this pick, and they, you know, moved up to get him. Yeah. And you know, we've talked about it. Like, the last thing they want to do is be seen as, as that, as a failure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a good look to trade up in the draft and miss on the quarterback you traded up to get, especially, I hate to say it because everyone always fucking says it, but with Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes behind him. So that's my take, too, is I believe unless Mitch struggles mightily here in the buildup towards week one, I believe Mitch starts week one, and we've seen throughout the last couple years Mitch gets hurt at some point. So either by injury or by play, I believe we're going to see both quarterbacks on the field this year. And for Mitch, he's got to play well enough that when Foles does step on the field, we don't make a permanent switch and ride Foles out for the rest of the year. And I think it's set up well because Mitch has shown his success and ability to win against the Lions. And I I hate to bring it up for you, Brett, but it is what it is. So if we start Mitch week one – play the Lions and then the Giants, my hope is that we get out to a hot start, maybe get 2-0, and and build Mitch's confidence from there. If not, he's going to struggle right off the bat. Worst case scenario, in my opinion, is we either start week one with Foles or Mitch struggles to start the year and we go to Foles week three or four. Then we don't really have a fallback plan if Foles isn't 20, what is it, 2017 or 2016 Foles. If he's not that, then we're going to struggle also. What do you think, uh, Anthony? I mean, I mean, if you're, if you're looking at it from Mitch's standpoint, you see that they brought in a quarterback that is a veteran, yeah. has been to a Super Bowl. Super Bowl MVP. Put, yeah. And won. Like, <laughs> the pressure is on for that guy. And you yeah. know what? I didn't like that the Bears picked Mitch. Yeah. Even, like, still to this day, I didn't like it. And I know – 
everybody says, oh, you could have got, you know, other, this person or this person or that person. Yeah. Or whatever. But the reason I didn't like the pick was he only played really one year of college football. Yeah. And if you're really, if you're a GM in that clubhouse and you're sitting there saying, okay, how am I going to win a Super Bowl? Mitch Trubisky's not your guy. Okay. Like no, you don't look at who's winning. Like it's not, I know he's got the attributes of LA kind of yeah. a Marino S type person. Yeah, right? Upside, upside for days, but upside yeah. doesn't win championships. But, but those guys put their time in, I mean, in college too, they learn the game. They got really well. It's a different game now. Now you got your Deshaun Watsons and your Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jacksons of the world. Yep. Mitch Trubisky is not even close. I mean, not even close. And I'm a Bears fan, and I'm being harsh. No, it's he could be good. He could be a Drew Brees, and if he could get get to Drew Brees' level, they got a shot. But man, I don't even see Drew Brees. <laughs> I, I don't. And I'm the biggest Mitch supporter. But I don't see that upside. I really don't. I've heard the Drew Brees comparison when we draft him because our GM, Ryan Pace, is a former he used to work for the Saints, long time for the Saints. So he's seen Drew Brees up close and personal, and yeah. that's who he referenced when he took Trubisky, and I never saw it. I saw a guy that you can win with, but he's never going to be better than a top 15 quarterback. And he's nowhere near a top 15 quarterback right now. He really regressed yeah. last year. And so, in my opinion, we need to play the strengths of our defense. That is at least top 10, right? Play the strength of the defense. Play conservative on offense so that you're not asking Trubisky to do too much. And run the ball. You know, we the Bears uh, – so tell me what you think about this, Brett. The Bears had Jordan Howard, who was pretty successful running back in this league, and we got rid of him last year, before the year started last year because he didn't fit our scheme. So you bring in David Montgomery, and then we barely use him. We go into games against the Saints, and we throw the ball 54 times and run the ball seven times. Even in Detroit, you talk about all the time how Stafford struggled because of a lack of running game. You have to be able to do both. Yeah, it's – I mean, it's something that can balance out what is expected of you, too. You know, yeah. Like teams, you can't run the ball. They're not going to call – be calling plays to stop the run. So, um, yeah. they're not going to guess as much, which makes it even more so that you need to step up and, and you know, you have to play almost perfectly at that point um, in order to overcome that because now, you know, this defense has a huge uh, advantage against you. Uh, that uh, you wouldn't have against them or, or other people yeah. uh, because of the fact that you're a one-headed monster and, and you have to do this the whole time, and they know that. So. And what that leads to, when an inability to run the ball or not interested in running the ball, you become predictable on offense. And then the pass rush is getting there quicker because they don't respect the run. And then you get yourselves in three and long third and long, and then you're giving the ball back and your defense is tired and winded and back on the field. So it all adds together, and that's why I want to see a much better, much more balanced team in 2020. And hopefully, you know, what's your thoughts on this, Anthony? Matt Nagy was coach of the year in 2018 as a rookie, a rookie head coach. And we won the division and had such a successful year. In my opinion, he's a really big part of why we, why we regressed in 2019. And he wasn't anywhere near coach of the year. And we were unbalanced on offense. Do you think that Matt Nagy, do you still believe in Matt Nagy and think that he can get back to being coach of the year material? Yeah, I would like to believe so, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think he runs a pretty tight ship yeah. compared to, you know, the last coach. So. I think he's pretty. I think he's doing pretty well. Like I, yeah. I think he's doing all right. I think, uh, you know, you look at you had the Mitch, you had the injury to Mitch. I think that took him off schedule. I think that really the heart of the season. Back. Yeah, yeah. I mean that. I mean that really killed him because towards the end you started to see Mitch kind of start to get it a little bit. You yeah, felt like he was starting to get With it. The Cowboys game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you just. I kind of felt bad for him because I didn't feel like it was a fair shake in such a competitive environment, like being a, yeah. Bears, a Bears football coach and kind of like, you know, we, the fans always put so much pressure on the guy, but 
I mean, I think from where they were to where they are now, kind of having a little bit of a new way of thinking. Yeah. Uh, they, they for sure have gotten a lot better, especially against the Lions. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We had a good quarter, or what believed to be a good quarterback in Jay Cutler, who pretty much struggled, couldn't beat the Lions, and couldn't beat the Packers. Yeah, Jay, Jay Cutler, uh, I don't know, man. He don't, I'd always see his head hanging down. He just mm-hmm. never seemed like a good – a big the body good language good quarterback. quarterback, yeah. The bad yeah, body just kind of like not like into it, man. I don't know. Like he just – didn't love it. Maybe he fell out of love with the game, like almost. Like you could see near it on his face. Near the end of his career, he definitely seemed like he wishes he was in any other, anywhere else. You know. Yeah, but then he goes off. to Miami. He goes to the Dolphins and struggled pretty. I mean, he wasn't great there. He had his moments, like anywhere. But that's just I feel like who Jay Cutler was. It's yeah. Yeah. Line, just whatever. Yeah. I like remember, I remember when Brian Urlacher was dating Paris Hilton one time, and. uh <laughs> she came to a game and he didn't perform so well. So maybe, maybe he was having some girl issues. I don't know. Maybe yeah, was yeah, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Yeah. But uh, so I, I'm saying this: like as much as Trubisky struggled in 2019, and so you can point to Mitch 100. percent Like he's got to do a lot better. But if if Nick Foles is starter and playing a lot of games this year, and Nagy's calling the same type of bullshit. Nick Foles is going to struggle just as much as Trubisky did. Um, yeah. So. You got to have that communication. Yeah. There, there between, you know, your, your coordinators and your, and your, you know, key components of, of both sides of the ball, then it doesn't matter who you put in there. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be difficult to succeed. So, Brett, let's get your prediction on the Bears 2020 season. Um who, what do you think their record is, and what's their win range? Um, Fire us up a little bit. <laughs> I think I would say you know the Bears. It's it's unpredictable as year, as the year has been. I guess you would say. Yeah. Um, do I think that they're gonna overcome that lack of? You know, identity showing who they are offensively. That especially with the questions on defense, not necessarily. But um, if, for some reason, if if they're able to click on both ends and they are able to get that defense backed up there, that mm-hmm. you know, this you definitely have to say like if Trubisky doesn't get it done with that, um, then it the, the writing's on the wall. So yeah, it's uh, I think they're. Uh, <laughs> You know, I think if the first couple of games Trubisky comes out and picks up a couple of wins, and they're going to be have a winning record. I say nine and seven. Yeah. Um, you know, that but, start is key. I mean, we got out to a three and one start last year, and you see how that season ended. Right. So they got to be consistent. Um, you're going to have to, you know, figure out who. You got to get over the uh, questions of what has been lurking for quite some time uh, in certain areas for Chicago. So, and that's now's the year to do it, especially with Trubisky. Yeah. So I think, I think eight, you know, 500, eight, eight, nine, and seven. All right. That's respectable. That's about what I have. Nine and seven. I have them in the eight to 11 win range. I'm being a little optimistic because I mean, I feel like the defense is in for a bounce back year. I think top 10 is like their floor because this defense is so talented. I think Eddie Jackson bounces back. I think Khalil Mack has a better year uh, stats-wise, and I love the Robert Quinn addition. A healthy Akeem Hicks will help. And my favorite defender, Roquan Smith, is continuing to get better and better. Dude. What do you think, Anthony? Dude, that dude, that defense, those guys all have a chance to be pro bowlers. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. I mean, it, and maybe I'm being a delusional Bears fan, but if you're asking <laughs> my prediction, I'm going to say – 10 and 6 if they everything goes to plan. I mean, yeah, I see no no issues with that. That, that defense is solid front to back and mm-hmm. you're looking at the offense. If the offense can get going, if you can get Komet in there doing some work with Graham. Yeah. And, and you know, you got a, Montgomery's got another year under his belt, Tariq Cohen. Hashtag Cohen Robinson Montgomery. had an awesome year. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I mean, 
10, 10 and six, man, if they get it together. Next yeah, um, and then it's all about, you know, the NFL, getting the playoffs, get hot at the right time, anything can happen. Uh, with, with seven teams being able to get in the playoffs this year, I think the Bears have a decent shot at it. But, again, it's a very tough division. we got to take care of, you know, beat the rivals, beat Detroit, beat Green Bay, beat Minnesota, and the rest will kind of take care of itself. So, we'll see. I'm optimistic. I hope to God we have a full season. I can't wait for week one. Anthony, how do you think no preseason is going to affect this quarterback competition? Oh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely going to obviously have an effect for Foles for sure. Yeah. That's why I always. That's why I think Trubisky will get this. Will get to start maybe like the first four or five games. Yeah, some start An injury or play might put Foles in at least at some point. Might put Foles in, and I think we do play the Lions first game. I think that's yeah, week one at Detroit. I can't wait for that game. I'm gonna be so <laughs> hyped. <laughs> start preparing on how you uh, get on going with the rest of the season being zero one. I'm just. Gonna- <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. Oh man. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, at Detroit, New York, Atlanta, there's a chance two and zero, three and zero in there. I mean, Detroit, that's a one and zero start right there. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. All the teams you think are going to be bad always end up showing up, especially the first game. Hey, we had a hard time beating Detroit last year with Jeff Driscoll and David Blau. They get a healthy Stafford. Who knows? Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> We finally go get Stafford Trubisky for like the first time ever. I feel like so. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. I hope we get that. Yeah. So, hey, Alex, did you ever? Did you get? Did you ever join that NFC Elite? I don't. I don't think so. Did you? Do you send me that? Uh, I think my buddy James did. I think he may have, or he was going to. All right, I gotta get in on that. Yeah. I got a lot of shit to help, say. Help the show out. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on, guys. Good shit as always. Anthony, you brought it. You're welcome on anytime. I'll have to get you on through the season and all that. Um, Good shit. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Bears fans, chime in. Tell Brett why he's wrong. Appreciate the support. (laughs) Have a great week, guys. Thanks for coming on, guys. You you guys both did really well. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Good meeting you, Brett. Yeah, good, good talking, good catching up. Have a great week, guys. Peace out.